Lord Jesus, I'm humbled and blessed to stand here next to you and trying to give a talk about you. Uh, I would so much prefer to be one of those candles burning on the altar and just being silent and worshipping you with their fire, with the light they give. But as you call me to, to speak, I entrust to you the, the whole talk. I call upon your Holy Spirit to guide me and to open all of us for the message that you wish to transmit to us. I believe, Lord, that you want to speak to our hearts now, and this is your time. We consecrate this time to you. We are here for you, all of us. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Wow, you are many. Beautiful to see you here. I'm not surprised that you came. If I were you, I would come as well. It's such a, such a special evening. And to be here on that very evening, in the place that is devoted, that's consecrated to John Paul II, and is even more special. So now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, if you wish, you can close your eyes as I will read uh, two sentences of John Paul II. I want you to hear them, hear him speaking these words now. Uh, I might help you with my Polish accent, uh, though female voice, but still Polish accent, so try to imagine it's John Paul. There is nothing more than man needs than divine mercy. That love which is benevolent, which is compassionate, which raises man above his weakness to the infinite heights, to the holiness of God. There is nothing more than man needs than divine mercy. He said these words when I was only 17 and I didn't know that he's interested with divine mercy. I wasn't interested in divine mercy at that time. Uh, amazing how long the journey was for me. So now I'm like totally about divine mercy. And uh, so he was and he, he really guided me to this congregation, totally devoted to divine mercy. He died exactly 12 years ago. That was also the seventh day of Easter octave. That was also the eve of Divine Mercy Sunday, just like today. That was also evening, just like now. And so we came here. There's no better place to be this evening. And we came to celebrate mercy of God. So we cannot rejoice John Paul more than by doing this, celebrating mercy. Divine Mercy Sunday, that's the feast that he made universal for the whole church in 2000. Uh, he fulfilled Jesus' desire that he expressed to St. Faustina 70 years earlier. It's amazing how patient is our God. In the 30s, he spoke about it. I desire the Feast of Mercy. My heart rejoices with that feast. I want that feast. And 70 years later, we have it. But he knew, he, I mean, he's God. He, he knows uh, this is the time of the church. This is how it goes in the church. And thanks be to God. 
So now is the time to celebrate mercy. And let us spend this whole evening uh, worshiping God for, for his merciful love. And not only this evening, may this be like opening door for tomorrow, for the great feast. And may the spirit of gratitude uh, immerse, immerse, no, like fulfill our hearts. We just celebrated his, uh, his resurrection. And there's no better news than that, that Christ is risen. And you could say, well, that's all we need to know. Christ is risen. But it seems like there is something more. I mean, like he wants more. He wants to give us more. He comes as the risen Christ to us with his hands full of gifts. As he came to the disciples, closed in the upper room, full of fear. He came with the hands full of gifts, the gifts which gave, gave them peace. And I was so amazed reading this today's gospel when he comes to them telling uh, how little is their faith. So basically being a little bit disappointed, if not like very much disappointed with them. And in the next sentence he says, I'm sending you to the whole humanity. Preach the gospel, you sinners. It's so, such a contrast, you know. He, he's so aware of our weaknesses. And still he chooses us and he sends us. And also that's why I'm here in front of you as one of the biggest sinners probably here in this church. Because he, he chooses the weakest ones. The weakest? There is such a word, Right? Feast of Divine Mercy. Jesus asked for this feast in 14 revelations given to Sister Faustina. 14, one four. He's not this type who repeats many times. But in this case, in the case of Divine Mercy Sunday, he repeated his desire 14 times. And that's more effort, more attention than he gave to any of other elements of divine mercy devotion. And the whole devotion is like his, his gift. In this devotion, there's nothing human. It's only God. God and his desires. And we who try to fulfill his desires, like John Paul establishing the Divine Mercy Sunday, and we celebrating this Sunday, because he said this is his desire, and we just try to follow. Divine the mercy devotion is totally his, totally divine. And why so much attention to, to the feast? And my suggestion, suggestion is that we simply follow his words, that we um, look closely on what he said to find out together. Yeah, there are no easy answers uh, when it's about Jesus. He, he's a mystery, but we should try to understand a bit of his mystery. I chose one quote from St. Faustina's diary, uh, one most es essential for the Feast of Mercy. Uh, before we will focus on Jesus' words and expressions, like in detail, we will try to you know, go deeper and to understand every word, every expression he says about the Divine Mercy Sunday. Uh, let us first hear the whole message in one piece. If you have diaries, you can check uh, now or later on. That's number three, 699. 699, Jesus said to Sister Faustina. And again, if it's easier for you, you can close your eyes, just listen. This is, these are his words, I will just quote. My daughter, tell the whole world about my inconceivable, inconceivable mercy. I desire that the feast of mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls 
and especially for poor sinners. On that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. On that day, all the divine floodgates through which graces flow are open. Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. My mercy is so great that no mind, be it of man or of angel, will be able to fathom it throughout all eternity. Everything that exists has come forth from the very depths of my most tender mercy. It is my desire that the Feast of Mercy be solemnly celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter. Mankind will not have peace until it turns to the fount of my mercy. The end of the quote. So now let us go step by step. Jesus said to Faustina, do you remember the beginning of the quote? How he called her? My daughter. I would like you to hear it today, him speaking to you from this altar. My daughter. Tsurko moja. Hija mia. My daughter. My son. My son. That perspective changes everything. That's why I stop on this beginning of the quote so, so long. It makes everything different when you hear him calling you, my son, my daughter. Tell the whole world. Okay, half of the world is the United States of America, isn't it? So here we are sharing the message of mercy with half of the world. So not much is left. And now seriously, uh, when he says the whole world, it's very significant. Because he could say, I'm sending you to the whole Catholic Church. He didn't. He could say, I'm sending you to, the, to all the Christians. He didn't. He said, tell the whole world. What a task, what a mission, also for us to speak about the mercy of God to all the people, no matter their beliefs or unbeliefs, just tell them. My daughter, tell the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. Inconceivable. This is the word he uses. In Polish it's uh, niepojęte. Niepojęte miłosierdzie. Inconceivable mercy. Um, and to understand this world, I needed to use uh, one of the most frequently used websites, Google Translate. And it's very educating because then you may learn many synonyms. And uh, all these words are, are beautiful and all suit perfectly to, to mercy of God. Let us follow Google, Google Translate. So inconceivable, God's mercy is inconceivable. 
and God's mercy is also incomprehensible, unimaginable, incredible, unbelievable, or for some even impossible. My daughter tell the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. I desire, says Jesus. Have you ever wondered about his desires? Look, the whole message of mercy, which uh, John Paul truly recommended to all the people to learn the true face of God, shows us God who, who's like fire. He's full of desires. In, in the whole diary of Sister Faustina, uh, the word desire appears 306 times. 306. That's a lot. He's full of desires. I love when he speaks about his mercy that it's like burning flames in him. It's good to remember God has desires. That means he's, uh, he's totally not indifferent. Whenever you will be tempted that he doesn't care, don't believe these ideas. They do not come from the Holy Spirit. He's definitely the one who cares the most. He cares more than you care about yourself. That's one thing I know I learned already. I desire, says the Lord, that the feast of mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls. Refuge, shelter. What does it mean? I didn't need Google Translate this time. But, you know, when he speaks about refuge and shelter, it means that we are in danger. Shelter is for those who, something is happening, something bad is happening. There, there is uh, someone uh, who's threatening us. There is a dangerous enemy. In the sixth chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, we read, Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Devil, devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. We don't see him. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces. There's a real battle going on. And I bet all of you could Tell, could, sh could share stories about times of struggle, of battle, even of war. Maybe now you are in such experience of war and you don't feel safe and you need a shelter and you need a refuge. Divine Mercy Sunday. I just love for Another quote when Jesus once said to Faustina also about the feast. On the day of my feast, it's his feast, the feast of mercy, you will go through the whole world and bring fainting souls to the spring of my mercy. I shall heal and strengthen them. And just imagine Faustina uh, tomorrow a very busy day for her, she has to go through the whole world and bring fainting souls to the spring of mercy. You know, she, she was a tiny lady. And now to bring all those souls to the spring of mercy, difficult task, but yeah, now she's uh, without the limits of the body so she can do these things. Um, but even, you know, this, these are the words he said to her during her lifetime. She had this weak body, she was uh, sick. 
And then he said to her, you will go through the whole world and bring fainting souls to the spring of my mercy. And that seems that we, we cannot find any excuse because he directs these words obviously to us as well. Bring fainting souls to the spring of my mercy. Bring them to me. I will heal them and strengthen them, but I need you to bring them to me. Now that's the challenge. Will you accept the challenge? Will you feel res take the responsibility for others, for, for the people who are fainting? Maybe some of them you know, but I believe that there are many whom you do not know, and they are maybe like walking dead people. It's not even fainting. They are not even fainting. They are like walking dead bodies, and they need you to bring them to Jesus. But do you care? Jesus says, I desire that this feast, feast of my mercy, be a refuge and shelter for all souls, and especially for poor sinners. Do you feel that this feast is especially for you? I love this, uh, this connection of these two words, poor sinners. When he looks at us, he sees poor sinners. There's no word of condemnation in it, no accusation, but understanding and compassion. I don't know if you feel it the same, but for me it's, it's obvious, poor sinners, he, he, he feels with us, he understands us, he understands our weak um, disposition, yeah, can we say like that? How do you deal with your sins and weaknesses? That's the question. Would you call yourself with love, sinner or or as soon as you realize there is sin in your life, you just condemn yourself. Usually we have two ways of dealing with our sins and weaknesses. We pretend that nothing happened, or we justify ourselves, or we put a blame on, on somebody else. This is how we deal with the problem, because we are afraid that if we would admit, yes, I am a sinner, and yes, I am weak, I won't be worthy of being loved. And I would die if I wouldn't be loved. So I have to pretend I'm perfect. Go through your subconscious and search. It's, it's there. I'm positive it's there. I have to be perfect. I cannot be a sinner. Because I, who would love a sinner? And who would love a weak person full of problems? And that's all what I am. I'm perfect me. But that's again the lie of the evil one. Because Jesus has totally different logic. He said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. There are many quotes like that in the Bible. And you know them. So we need to repeat them again and again. He came to call us sinners. So I don't have to be ashamed to admit that I am one of those. He said once to Saint Faustina, when a soul sees and realizes the gravity of its sins, when the whole abyss of misery into which it immersed itself is displayed before its eyes, some say that this will be the moment of our death, yes? To see, you know, like a, like a display of the whole misery that we are, 
all the sins we committed during our lifetime. What a frightening moment. And Jesus says, let it not despair, but with trust, let it throw itself into the arms of my mercy as a child into the arms of its beloved mother. We shouldn't be afraid even of the darkest truth about us or about anything. No matter how heavy the truth would be, how dark, how difficult to accept, we should just embrace it and run with it to the arms of the merciful Father. Like a child who's, who's not afraid to admit, Mom, Mommy, I did it. You know, look, look, I broke it. And just bring her all the broken pieces of her favorite vase. Just, Mommy, I did it. I'm sorry. And this is the motherly love that's in God the Father. Let us never forget that he, he's the father, he's the mother. And this motherly aspect of his mercy is uh, called in the Bible with this beautiful Hebrew word, rachamim. Rachamim, that's mother's womb. This is the love God shares for us. It's, it's like from within, you know, he's the one who gives birth to us. So this is the unconditional love. He cannot not to love us. Is it in English? Like, he has to love us. I mean, he, he cannot not love us. I know it's not English. But you understand it. It's like he's, he's kind of like forced to love us. This is this inner motivation that he cannot resist. I mean, you are my child. How can I... How can I not love you with all your imperfections? I mean, you are mine. We sang in one of the beautiful uh, songs at the beginning of the adoration. Yes, I am yours, you are mine, and nothing else matters. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. As the next sentence uh, suggests, the fount of mercy are the sacraments. We will speak about it in a moment. But later Jesus also said that on that day are open all the divine floodgates through which graces flow. So his graces on the day of his feast, of the feast of his mercy, are limitless and they fall down on earth from all the possible holes in heaven. So they are not even holes. It's like it's, everything is open. It's, it's just whether we will reach our hands or hide our hands in the pockets. And then, of course, graces may, may fall, but they will fall on the ground. As long as you will reach out your hands, they will be fulfilled with graces. The Feast of Mercy. Reading all the quotations, all the messages that Jesus gave about the Divine Mercy Sunday, it becomes so clear that he simply wants to give us everything. And I know you could say, well, this is how he is, like, always. So why are you saying that there is something special tomorrow? Well, I don't know. Ask him. He simply said so. I mean, like, that there is a special day to give us graces in a special way. Probably the word special is the most accurate. Like, we don't really have enough words or really understand what he is about, but maybe special is the best expression. So, special feast with special graces that he wants to give us in a special way. Um, he's always generous, but tomorrow it's special. So he gives, wants to give us much, and his joy is to give much. 
It's also too important to see, it's not like he, won, he gives much, but at the same time he feels that, uh, okay, he gives, so he, uh, he's like now without these things, yes, now he's, yeah. Okay, so when you give, when we people, when we give something, if I would give you my watch, I wouldn't have the watch. But when he gives something, it's different logic. It's, uh, nothing is missing in him. It's, it's quite contrary. It, it multiplies. And it really happens with us when we follow Jesus. If we share mercy, the acts of mercy, whatever we do and give out of love to him, it actually doesn't take away anything from us. It's, I know it sounds like... Uh, uh, but yes, I know you know it, I know you understand it because you, you are already doing it. And just, I'm just naming it, what you do. But you could also say, tell me today that uh, you have the experience of difficult prayer, of unanswered prayers. And it, that, that it's hard for you to believe in the generosity of God, that he's the one who responds your calling because maybe many times you've experienced that when you pray, it's like talking to the wall. All that all your prayers go into emptiness. These are just feelings. Today's world um, treats feelings as the highest authority. And I tell you now, these are just feelings. Our God is hidden God. Our prayers do not go to emptiness. They go to eternity where he is. So it all makes sense. Every prayer of yours is heard and answered in his time, in his way. The question is only, do you trust him? And we all have problems with this short word, trust. That's why he asked it to be written on the image. The greatest challenge to live according to these words, Jesus, I trust in you especially when it goes the other way you planned. Continuing the quotation about the feast, a very important sentence now. Jesus said, the soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. That's the most exceptional grace with Jesus attached to the celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday. Your heart can be as pure as and clean as it was on the day of your baptism. Can you believe it? Can you imagine? So how to obtain this special grace? First, we are invited to go and meet Jesus in the confessional, so that we may have pure and open heart to receive him and the ocean of graces. So first confession, but God would it be merciful God if he would like all of us to go to confession on Divine Mercy Sunday. That would mean he has totally no mercy towards his priests. Still, many people think that they have to go to confession on Divine Mercy Sunday. So let me tell you clear, no, there's no such need. Uh, you just need to be in the state of grace. So if you've been to confession a week ago for resurrection, or a few days ago, or maybe you are so holy that even a month ago, but you are still in the state of grace, I don't believe it, but who knows? 
so confession first. Secondly, on the day of the feast, now that's really on the day of the feast, we should receive Jesus in Holy Communion. That doesn't seem to be difficult, right? It's Sunday. You are planning to go to the church anyway. So just receive him, but maybe with greater faith than usually, maybe with greater gratitude, you know, like appreciating who he is and what he does for you. And opening your hearts for all these gifts, like with great trust, give me whatever you want. I mean, I op I'm open to all the graces, even those which I don't have to understand yet. It is also important to strive to live in the spirit of trust and mercy in our daily life, not to mention on the very day of the feast. And the spirit of the devotion is trust and mercy. This is what the whole devotion is about. This is what's the calling of merciful Jesus. Like, trust me. Just trust me. And be merciful to each other. So don't miss this chance. Leave your past in the arms of the merciful God and start everything anew. Complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. It is an amazing grace, a very generous gift. Jesus knows about all the temptations and struggles, struggles so many people go through in our century. And he reaches his hand to us. He wants to save us. And he makes everything that's possible to save as many as possible. And one of the expressions of the efforts of his mercy, it's that very feast is that very grace. He said, souls perish in spite of my bitter passion. I'm giving them the last hope of salvation. That is the feast of my mercy. At the end, I want you to listen to a testimony of a young man, a drug addict from Slovakia. That's a country just next to Poland. Maybe you remember Sister Inga who gave a talk here in January, right? She, she is from Slovakia. So this man, this young man describes his life as an addict, as an aimless pilgrimage through the world. He said, but I myself chose such a life a few years ago. I stopped studying and being interested in the problems that were really important it was drugs and a few other things whose slave I became that suddenly loomed out at me as my alpha and omega. I became a slave to my body. Self-eroticism became my daily bread. In video games, I found relaxation and escape from the world which I could not understand. I was unable to live in a respectful and dignified way. Every day when I got up, I switched on a video game and I was able to switch it off only a few hours later when I felt the need of eating something. Such is a daily scenario of many young people nowadays. On top of that, like the last outcry of hopelessness, there came a black magic with which I associated some hopes for gaining comfort and putting an end to evil in my life. But the outcome was exactly the opposite. Psychedelic trances are the influence of hallucinogenic drugs intensified and I stopped controlling myself. More and more often I began to fall into states of panic, hopelessness, paranoia. I had the impression that everything was falling on top of me and that I was being crushed. When I studied all these occult problems and when I made offerings to the good spirits, 
I was immersed in all of this up to my ears. And then I noticed Jesus among many gods. I was searching for help. Quite quickly, I came to a conclusion that Jesus is different. In the Gospels, he said that he loves me, that he loves each and every man. And this was precisely what I needed, what I desired and looked for. Slowly, love was entering my life and began to change me. On the Feast of Divine Mercy, my friends and I went on a pilgrimage to Krakow. <laughs> we arrived at the Shrine of Divine Mercy at 4 a.m. As I decided to see this place, which I had heard so much about, I went into the shrine and what I saw truly astounded me. For the shrine was filled with people on their knees, praying and presenting their entreaties to God. I sensed that they were entrusting their very hearts to him. After many years, I decided to go to confession. I fell to my knees and prayed to God, begging him to forgive me all the evil I had done and for all my selfish, selfishness. I asked him for mercy, for I am truly a great sinner. After confessing my sins, during the Mass that followed, I received Holy Communion. It was the first time after eight years, and I felt so happy that it's even difficult to describe. When I received the host, I cried tears of happiness. Since that time, many things have changed in my life entirely and many of my faults have been rectified. Today, I no longer engage in masturbation. I do not destroy my life with drugs. I do not spend hours playing video games. Now I regularly serve at Mass as an altar boy, and I love God for what he is like and for the fact that he accepted me the way I am. Divine mercy. Our joy, our hope, our mission. It's all about salvation of souls. So let us join Jesus' mission and spread the message of mercy. Tell everyone about the goodness of our God. Invite them to participate in tomorrow's feast fully, to take all the graces. In a few moments, we will pray together with the words of the chaplet, this powerful prayer given us by Jesus himself, prayer in which we will turn to our God, to our good Father, with childlike trust, knowing that he can do all things and that he wants to give us everything we need and more than we can even imagine. The more the soul trusts, the more it will receive.